when you see the word applications, what that means is, okay, we want to see how this idea relates to something that we find in the real world. Okay? Now the most important thing for trigonometry is when you know want if we, when you want to know where stuff is. That's position. Okay? So first we're going to focus on angles for position, two different kinds, both of which you've met before, but maybe you haven't heard of them together. Okay? The first thing is when you got something like this, uh, this is P for points, so this is where we are, okay? And we're looking at something like say a flagpole. Okay? So a flagpole, maybe you're looking at the top. It's a vertical angle away from you, right? So around this diagram, what I want you to include first is a line on the ground to the base of the flagpole. Okay? Line on the ground to the base of the flagpole. Now, when you can kind of imagine the angle that you're measuring, I could draw it flat, but this is something that exists in 3D space, the space that we live in. So I'm kind of looking at this. Um, the fancy word is an, it's an isometric diagram. I'm looking at it from a perspective, okay? What I want you to imagine is, if you were to draw the triangle that belongs in here, it's on a big, flat piece of paper, like this. Can you imagine the piece of paper? Can you imagine it stretching all the way between you and the flagpole? And now I want you to imagine, okay, where is the angle as I look to the top of the flagpole? Let's join up that line. There we go, roughly, okay? So what I'm do is doing is looking at it side on. Now, even though it doesn't look like it, because of the perspective, there is a right angle, which is a whole bunch of right angles, but there's a right angle in this triangle that I've just drawn. Where is it? The flag and the floor. Yeah, very good. That's precisely right, between the flag and the floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to indicate that with a right angle sign. It doesn't look like one, it looks like it's obtuse, but that's because of the perspective. Now what we're doing is, we're looking up at that. We're looking up. Oh my God. So I'm going to measure this angle. I'm just going to call it alpha. You'll see why I call it alpha in a minute, rather than something like theta. I want another angle in this diagram in a minute. So what I'm looking at is on a vertical plane. This piece of paper is standing up on its edge. Okay? So this is about vertical position. Now, because we're looking up at it, like you're literally raising your eyes, does anyone remember, this is called an angle of elevation. elevation. Fantastic, because an elevator, what it does is it takes things up. So this is an angle of elevation. If, on the other hand, we were somewhere high and we were looking down at something, we call that an angle of depression. So for instance, maybe there's like an ant or a bird on the top of that flagpole and it's looking at us. Where would an that ant. angle of depression be? Where would I draw it? How would I draw it? Next to the, like, the flag. Okay, it's going to have to be like from this point of view rather than down here, but here's a really important thing, right? I'm measuring from the ground and I measure up if I'm doing elevation. If I'm doing depression, I'm going to measure from again from a flat line and then down okay so in fact there's a line missing here that I need I'm gonna add it in now it's this line here okay so if I was that bird up there and now I'm looking down that in there is the angle of depression it's the same size can anyone tell me why it's the same size Hmm, okay, so I, I heard a few different words, right? The most particular that's helpful is alternate, right? So these two angles are alternate, but they're not just alternate. They're alternating between these two lines, and these two lines aren't just random lines, they're related. Does anyone know how these lines are related? Yeah, very good. They actually are all heading in the same direction. They're parallel lines. So what I'm going to do, just really small, I'm going to write this. This is the angle of depression. And this one over here is the angle of elevation. The size of the angles is the same, but where they are is very different. So that's all about when you're looking up and down, okay? Angles of elevation versus angles of depression. And because you see a right angle here, you also see a right angle here, all of your trig stuff is going to be useful in this scenario. Okay, so that's vertical position. 
What's the other kind of position that might be relevant for us who live in 3D space? Horizontal, okay? So remember I said we're drawing this diagram with perspective? So what I'm going to do now is, just like there's a giant vertical piece of paper, I'm going to lay down a giant horizontal piece of paper. So it's kind of like, here we go, I'm laying out, I'm laying out some carpet, okay? So this is flat, this is all on the ground, this is standing on its edge. This is up in the air. Let's put something here. Let's put a person, shall we? So if I put a person over here. Okay. Now, if I measure an angle for the position of that person, something like, say, this. Let's draw a line all the way over there. If you want to describe something's position, the angle's difference between you and this person over here. Okay. What do we call that? We don't call them angles of elevation or depression. That's all about up and down. What might we use? Sideways-ish. That's a very nice technical mathematical term. Let me give you a clue. We're talking about position, like which way are we facing? Old timey people used to hold something that started with a C that they could point around. They would use a compass, right? So a compass bearing a compass bearing is one way to talk about what's your angle to that person okay so just for the sake of argument let's suppose that this direction over here is north okay so again that red line is still on the ground okay. where would I put an angle in to work out which way this person is facing do I put it like here you put it towards or, the um, vertical line towards that straight. Okay, line. sure. So I'm going to put in this angle over here. This is the reason why I call this alpha. Let's call this guy beta. beta. Okay, or beta. They're both fine. Uh, it just looks like a B with a tail. Okay. So this guy down here, I'm measuring from north. I could use a compass to sort of point there. Maybe it's sort of northeast, I guess. There's another way to talk about when you've got things on the ground, horizontal angles. They're not compass bearings, they're another kind of bearing. Does anyone remember what they're called? True bearings. True bearings. Okay. So compass bearings or true bearings are both for talking about horizontal position. Okay. Um, when you describe something in terms of compass bearing, can someone give me an example of a compass bearing? I actually have one already written on the board. North. <coughs> Northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest, whatever. Okay? So we have an eight point compass, right? So never eat soggy wheat mix. And of course, uh, all of the in between ones, right? What, what are the in between ones? Okay, we've got northeast, we've got. Uh, I guess you could go uh, in clockwise order. What would come next would be, I guess, southeast. Then you're going to get southwest, and then you get northwest. So if you want, you can draw yourself a little compass here, and you can label it accordingly. Okay. But as you can imagine, um, this is a very blunt instrument. If someone is standing in between one of these eight points, it becomes a bit cumbersome to say, well, they're kind of there, sort of not really. Okay? And that's where true bearings come in. Can someone give me an example of how I might write a true bearing? Sure. So, for example, 103 degrees. To make sure we know it's true, we add one more thing, which is the letter T, usually. Occasionally you'll see it without the T, but you want to be as unambiguous as possible, as clear as possible, and that means everyone knows what you're talking about. Okay? Um, what's the advantage of doing this over this? It's more accurate. More accurate. Yeah, precision. Okay? Um, not only if like, someone might be in between, but here you can say, oh, exactly 46 degrees, and you can measure that across, that'll be the angle you get. Okay? One last thing that's worth mentioning. These things, because they are written in... Uh, Degrees, right? What's the, the largest number that you could think of that you could put in here? Especially put 360, right? Uh, 360 is the same as going all the way around and coming back to north. So it's, it's not normal to say 360. We'd normally just say zero. That's where you started, right? So what would be the next biggest number? 
359. 359, that's the biggest one. Okay? So as a result, all of these are three digits long, basically, like 103, 284. It's never going to get bigger than 359. Okay? So much so that these are often called three digit bearings. Okay? Because they're three digits. Uh, in fact, people like this convention so much that even if the number isn't three digits long, like this doesn't look like it's three digits long, does it? What angle would you call that? Just give me an estimate. 45. 45. People would say that's 045 degrees T. And that's what they mean by 45 degrees. Okay. Well, I think it's kind of for the sake of consistency and so that we all know exactly what you're talking about, which is a big deal. We want to make sure they communicate clearly. Okay. Vertical position. That's up and down. Horizontal position, that's all of these bearings. Where do you measure true from? Where do you start? You start. You always start from zero, but where's zero? Like it's north. Okay, which is why I put north in. And you always go clockwise. Does anyone know why we go clockwise? Because that's the way clocks go. Uh, in English, in English, when we write words and numbers, we read the script from left to write. Of course, not every script in the world is like that. Uh, Hebrew, Japanese, Chinese, a lot of those are actually right to left. But in English, in English, we start from north and then we go clockwise. In fact, that's probably worth drawing. You know how you've got your compass rows over here? Draw for me something down here for true bearings as well. You always start from north and then you go around and you measure clockwise. 